Yeah, <laughs> what's up everybody? I got my boy AJ here. Uh, we're just going to talk to him. I actually am at the West Side Certification and uh, AJ was uh, uh, had an awesome meet recently and he actually broke the world record in the 308 weight class. So I was talking to him about uh, maybe if he could walk us through that day and I, I overheard him talking about um, his feelings, you know, if he got his first, well his third attempt, right, the big squat, the one you were shooting for, you knew the rest of the meat was going to go well for you, right? Right. Yep. Well, tell me, tell me about like what it. <laughs> tell me about what it feels like, you know, to get under that type of weight. What was your What was your third attempt at the squat? Uh, I finished up with eleven forty. Uh, I took a PR attempt at eleven ten on my second, and uh, that went up no problems there. I jumped to eleven forty, which was the plan. Um, I actually lowered it. I was going to try eleven sixty. A couple of weeks out from the meet, you know, you write down all your goals ahead of time, and 1160 had been the goal. And I actually changed it because I knew that my bench and my deadlift, I could, you know, with those two lifts, I could get the number in my head that I wanted, which at the time was 20, 2805. World record previously was 2799 total. And uh, you got to beat it by at least five pounds for it to count. So 2805 was the goal. And I worked backwards and realized I didn't actually need an 1160 squat, I needed 1140 to make the rest happen, um, providing you know, I had a perfect day, which I did. So I lowered that to 1140, took 1140, and just as, just as expected, it went right up, um, no problems. Uh, going down, it felt heavy, you know, but uh, it's kind of weird to explain because for a lot of you guys out there, obviously, you know, you, you, you hear the 1100 pounds, 1140, whatever, and there's no real perception of what that feels like. But if you take like your max weight you've ever done and then just like threw another 50 on, that's pretty much what I did at this meet. And so, um, you know, it's a lot more mental, overcoming the mental feeling on the way down than it's coming up. I came up real easy, but going down, there was a lot of thoughts going through the head mm -hmm. uh, about the weight and the technique and that kind of stuff. And so, um, you know, it's kind of, you know, heavy's heavy, basically, and it affects the body the same the more you get. But it's definitely a mental barrier, and you just have to kind of overcome that and, and proceed forward. Can you, um, can you even come close to that mental training in the gym prior to the meet? I mean, you step on the stage and get on the platform and there's a level of excitability that you have to reach like you said mental prep you know, I mean you really have to be focused um, does that happen in the gym as well leading up? Um, for me it doesn't um, I think most uh, great lifters uh, it doesn't mm -hmm. um, there's a level there's a state you go to an emotional state that's only really accessed um, on the platform and I see a lot of it with athletes too there's a, a state they get into in a game um, the performance, you know, it's the, the perform the best mm -hmm. in a competition setting. Um, the, I think the problem is a lot of people who try to get like that in the gym, uh, try to get to that emotional state in the gym. It's actually so physically taxing. Uh, you, you know, I, I max out once a week following, you know, the West Side Methods. We, we, try, we max out twice, once for lower and once for upper. But never do I have the effect that a meat has on me. Mm -hmm. you know, meat takes me out for a week, a week and a half. Mm -hmm. Very susceptible to get, it, to get sick the week after a meat. Uh, immune system's down, that kind of stuff. I never have that during the training, mm -hmm. um, you know, training program. So uh, I definitely think it's, it's a whole different level. It's kind of, you, you kind of have to turn it on and know how to turn it on. And, and as you progress as, as a lifter, I've been doing this, you know, for nine years now, but you learn to control that more. Um, mm -hmm. At first it's, you know, just an uncontrollable rage and then you turn it into kind of a control rage. So mm -hmm. um, once you learn how to control that stuff, I think that's what makes a big difference. Yeah, definitely. Well, when you're working towards your world record uh, total, you must have been looking at your weaknesses and trying to identify them. Um, you were saying that you went out and saw our boy uh, Robertson. Sure. Um, tell me some of the things he saw at IFAS. Yeah, so after my last meet, which was in August uh, last year, um, I, I walked away from that meet and I actually uh, PR'd in the squat, did my first 1100, and, um, and PR'd in the deadlift for 785, but I was 50 off on my bench. I've been having a lot of shoulder in issues and things like that. But um, overall, like, I, I knew I wasn't healthy. Like, mm -hmm. I knew my body, even though I had a really great meet, I got a big, I had a 50-pound PR total, I knew I had a lot more in me. Um, and I knew I'd left a lot on the platform. And so um, my first thing I wanted to do is figure out why I keep having elbow. I keep having a lot of elbows issues. And I wanted to figure out what was going on. And so I, I took a trip up to IFAST in Indianapolis and visited with Mike. And uh, they ran me through an assessment up there and checked me out. 
and we found I had a lot of uh, rotator issues in the shoulders, a lot of weaknesses there, uh, especially for as strong as I am, you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of counterproductive. And um, so we went through a battery test, and then we also discovered how tight my hips were, um, and how actually my, uh, I was unable in a conventional position, I always pulled, well, up to this point I've been pulling conventional deadlift, and uh, I actually physically could not lock my hips out in a conventional position. I get real close, mm -hmm. and uh, obviously that was enough for the judges to pass. Is you know not enough for the eye really to tell with all the equipment on and everything. But uh, when they had it, when you know when they were testing me, I physically could not completely lock out my body, stand in a fully erect position, right. um, due to imbalances and weaknesses, tightness, that kind of stuff. So they went through and showed me a lot of stuff I could do for warm ups daily. Uh, a lot of like a lot of specialized stretching. For those movement patterns, uh, for the for those movements, and then also ha incorporate some single leg training into into my overall program, as well as a lot of I did a lot of back work, a lot of back work, mm -hmm. um, and to bring up that and some rotational stuff, exercises, just the work muscle groups that I wasn't really hitting with the traditional dumbbell barbell stuff that I've been doing for so long now, mm -hmm. uh, and so I really believe like those changes, uh, adding things in like single single leg, uh, you know, deadlifts. Uh, I was doing some step ups, some split squats, things like that, along with, you know, added, you know, I, I did mobility stuff, I did soft tissue stuff, but now doing specialized stuff for those weaknesses brought me back closer to normal. And Mike said something that was really, it really well. I like Mike and, and, you know, trust what he says. You know, they weren't trying to get me to a normal person, like how, what complete health is. They understand right. in our sport there's advantages. Um, there's advantages to having certain tightnesses, and there's advantages to have certain range of motions that are limited so that others are, are the strongest. And so it was a case of just bringing me back to safe and allowing me to be able to utilize everything, fire the muscles. And Mike said to me, if I fix, fix, my, uh, fix my hips, I'd be able to deadlift you know, 50 pounds more. Mm -hmm. And I went from 780 to 815. And uh, I switched over to the sumo stance from conventional because it did allow me to get my hips through a lot easier. Right. Uh, with the ma added mass, um, I, you know, I continued to gain gain weight throughout my weight class, but with the added mass, conventional was becoming more difficult to find a comfortable position. So right. we switched to sumo, and at first I was really weak, and I had to do a lot of ultra-wide sumos to bring my hip strength up, because I hadn't been in that position for a while. But once I started to do that, once I, fought, once I learned how to fire the, the muscles that I already had, that weren't really firing, mm -hmm. that's when everything in the deadlift started to take off. And the squat had continued to get getting strong. And then, you know, the fixing, you know, building the back up, fixing the rotators, my elbow pain is limited. It, it pretty much is non-existent. Comes in here and there, but obviously that's a lot to do with the heavy squatting and benching back to back. Right. Uh, cause, you know, you just gotta take care of your body. But all those changes added up to going from 2650 to 28, 25. Wow. And, you know, that, you know, basically, that's, that's a huge PR and power lift and that just doesn't happen overnight. And honestly, um, you know, at this point in time, I don't feel that was like my best three lifts. Mm. Even though I went nine for nine, even though I had a perfect day, you know, and that stuff doesn't happen. I didn't leave the meet feeling like I had nothing left in the tank. Mm -hmm. I felt like I had something on every lift. And so I'm very excited for moving forward. And uh, hopefully I can continue, you know, making improvements and fixing the things that need to be fixed. And uh, just, you know, push that record up and maybe hopefully um, take the number one all-time total ever for regardless of weight class so wow we'll talk about your goals in just a second here but what were some of the uh you mentioned step ups and uh single leg rdls and uh, split squats for your hips what did mike have you doing for a rotator and uh we did a lot of like chop exercises okay um he had me do some as uh, a zot press mm -hmm. um and uh just some like Basic, face like, pulls, uh, more face pulls, more... Uh, yeah, but like rotation. a lot of rotational stuff for the abdominals too. Okay. I did. Uh, I had to modify stuff because we don't have all the equipment here. Mm -hmm. So I did some grap like grappler stuff right, for right. rotational stuff. Um, so and, he was just integrating like uh, shorter stuff with your hip stuff. Right, rotation. right. Yeah. And uh, it, it really made a difference in just hitting the scapula. And then a lot of the warm-up stuff too. Mm -hmm. Making sure I activated those before I trained. Mm -hmm. It made a huge difference. And, I, and, and it's funny because I used to always do warm-ups... Mm -hmm. And then I kind of got away from it. You know, you, you, it's kind of like when everything goes great, you, you, you forget all the little things and you back away. And, yeah. you know, I just allowed myself, you know, I was making progress and strength and I allowed those those areas that I'd usually address to, to get worse and worse and worse without addressing them. Because I think where I was getting stronger, it was an oversight, you know. Right. It was, 
you know, I don't want to spend, you know, I don't want to go to the gym early today. I don't want to, do, you know, so, um, you know, even at this level, you, you start to, for, you don't forget things, but you just skip things. And, mm -hmm. and uh, honestly, when I made the decision, I thought after that meeting my, in August, I knew that I had left so much on the table. And I knew if I waited till March, I had a really good shot at taking the record. But I knew the only way that was going to happen is if I put all, all my, you know, put everything in, 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 in line and was bang on and everything. And so nutrition had to be good, training had to be good, but I had to take care of my body. Restoration had to be good, warm-ups had to be good, you know, special exercises for my weaknesses. And, and so I put that all together, and it's really the first time I've ever focused on everything as hard as I can. And, um, you know, pretty much everything I thought could happen, happened. Right. And I think a lot of times, a lot of times it's easy to look back and say, I should have done this, should have done that. And then you go into the next meet and you're looking back saying the same things. Right. And this was probably one of the first times that I, I switched everything I knew I'd done wrong. I wasn't lazy, like, the, you know, and, and even though I feel like I always work harder than everyone else, like, you still look back and say, man, I could have done this, I could have done that. And I, I think everyone does it, you mm -hmm. know, everyone does it. But I started to be able to do it before the August meet. So I knew I had a lot I needed to work on because even before I competed, I was looking back and like, man, you know, I, I messed this up, I didn't do this, I didn't follow mm -hmm. the diet. And so by just making making that effort and really, really dedicating and like, you know, making sure it happened, um, it made a big difference. And I, I think for a lot of people, that's all it takes, you know, mm -hmm. um, yeah, to, to make progress in anything they do. So, uh, but it's hard and, uh, you know, a lot of people fail and to make those changes. So, um, you know, I just, just want it more than ever and it just seemed to be the right time and you know just just pushed and pushed and pushed so last question you said uh you have big goals for yourself and i, I think we talked about the next one's 1200 for the squat that's the next goal yep then move on from there i want to go no one's ever done it at 308 so i'd like to do 1200 at 308 and you know have both the world record squat and total um i'd like to take the world record bench and deadlift but you know, the bench is up there at what ten seventy four or something, and the deadlift is uh, in the nine somewhere. And honestly, you know, the deadlift is a genetic thing, and and bench is owned by bench only guys. So mm -hmm. those numbers are going to be a little harder to catch. But I think I have a, a twelve hundred squat in me. Um, is a, if everything, I'm going to compete again here in about nine weeks at the nationals. Um, and uh, if everything, you know, is injury free and just keep doing what I do, and I don't see any reason I can't take that record. And then after that, it's to, to try to be the first man to total 3,000. There's, a, there's a, several other lifters out there who could do it. Donnie Thompson is competing tomorrow, actually. So by the time you watch this, it could have already been broken. Um, and then there's Andy Bolton over there in the UK that I thought for a long time, could put, if he put it together, he could do it. So there's a couple other lifters out there. But, you know, I was talking at lunch. And honestly, like up until this point, I've always set crazy goals. And for the longest time, I made 50 to 100 pound jumps every meet. And... A lot of people always thought it was crazy, but I always seemed to be able to achieve it. And so I just went into this meet and I broke the world record. A lot of people didn't think I'd break the world record. Uh, and, and I don't blame them. You know, when you throw crazy goals out there, you're either a crazy person or you actually know what you're talking about. And so I broke that and a lot of people were surprised. And it was a 175 pound PR total or something. Um, but I'm not, I don't plan to slow down. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a lot of people think it's crazy to say, I'm going to go from 28, 25, which has never been done. It's the second highest total ever. Um, regardless, and I'm all of a sudden going to go to 3,000. I don't think I'm going to do it in the next meet, or maybe not the next two meets, or whatever, but I don't see a point in my head to put limitations on it. My um, Right now, I think it's believable, and I think what the mind mind believes the body will achieve, and honestly, like I, I just think that it's possible. I think it's possible to do, and um, you know, I'm just going to keep pushing, and you know, really, something's either going to drop off and I'm, you know, I'm going to break a leg or tear something pretty bad or it's going to happen. So that's kind of my thought process there. But it's exciting. Right now, I'm very excited about lifting, as you probably can tell. And, uh, you know, I'm really, really looking forward to this next year in competition. i got a great team here at Westside Barbell, amazing coach under Louis. And without those guys, obviously, none of this would be possible. So, um, you know, i got the perfect surrounding. Um, and uh, right now, you know, it's just it's all on me. So, you know, I plan to just keep pushing. All right. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate you sitting down, and uh, we'll go back out to the seminar now. Ah. All right, thanks.